Amen. This is Pastor Jason Sparks. This is Grace Gospel Baptist Church. And uh, first of all, I apologize. We shared this to my personal page, but then we immediately shared it to the church page. So hopefully everybody will get on uh, and can see that. Uh, but we just want to thank you for tuning in today. Uh, we're looking for the Lord this morning. We want to go to church. Uh, I hate that we can't come together, that we can't fellowship, uh, but, but we can still worship. Amen. I hope you followed the guidelines and different things that I sent out uh, to where you gathered your family together and you're already prayed up and you've got your Bibles ready, amen? You know I'm preaching out of Psalm 77 unless the Lord changes it. And you're ready to go to church this morning. Uh, I, hope, I hope you're sitting there anticipating what the Lord's going to do because He's still on the throne. He's still God. He's still in control, amen? And I'm excited to see what He's going to do. Let me give you a couple of announcements. If there's any focus issues with our live stream, we apologize for that. Uh, we've been trying to fix that issue. Should have it fixed soon. Uh, also, this service will be on our website, uh, gracegospelbaptistchurch.com. Uh, by 2 o'clock, we'll have it uploaded. You can watch it there. And also on our YouTube channel. Go to YouTube and search for Grace Gospel Baptist Church, and you'll see our red logo there. And, and you can watch those there at 2 o'clock. Also, it'll be in the archives there on Facebook Live as well. Uh, so we'd love for you to watch it. We'd love for you to be a part of it. Amen. And we're thankful that if you want to give to us, if you're one of our members and, and you'd like to give, uh, Brother Press will be posting a link in the comments right there uh, from our website in the top right corner. It says give. You click on that or just click on the link that Brother Preston puts in the comments and, and you can give your tithes that way. Amen. And, and we thank you for understanding. Thank you for doing that. Uh, listen, this is our only service today, so we're going to go to church. We're not having service tonight, uh, but tune back in Wednesday at 8 o'clock. And, and, and predicate upon everything going on in our community and everything around us. Uh, we, we should be online here at 8 p.m. Wednesday night, so tune in for that. Also, I want to make a special announcement. We just started a new ministry, and we are on WEMM Radio 107.9 in the Charleston area, uh, the first and third Thursday, or Wednesday of every month, first and third at 5.30. So that's between the money man, Dave Ramsey, and just before the news. We'd love for you to get on on your way home from work, if you're driving from Charleston, driving somewhere. And we'd love for you to get on and listen to us preach, uh, and, and we thank you for supporting us. Amen. And listen, this is different. This is new to us, uh, but I'm going to go to church, and I hope you do too. I want you to talk to me. I, we got a good amen and shouting church here, and, and I want you to shout on there. Tyler, is anybody saying amen right now? One or two. Amen. We got a couple people already worshiping, already shouting. I, 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 agree. I thank you for that. Amen. And you just participate with us as much as you can. And what we're going to do, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to start service. Lauren's going to sing a couple, and I'm going to preach to you out of Psalm 77 on on on, on coping with the coronavirus. Amen. Victory in the virus. How can we have victory right now in our hearts, in our homes? What can we do uh, to deal with what's going on in our community? Let's pray. Lord, I love you. God, I praise your holy name. God, I thank you, Lord, for being God. Lord, I thank you, God, for who you are. I thank you, God, for comfort. God, I thank you, Lord, for peace, God. I thank you, God, for what you do for your children, dear Father. And Father God, I'm asking you, Lord, this morning, God, although uh, we are not physically assembled here in the church house, God, I ask you, Holy Spirit of God, to move in the homes, God, of the people watching, Lord. I ask you, God, to convict hearts of sin. Lord, I ask you, God, to take discouraged hearts and encourage them this morning. Lord, I ask you, God, if somebody's lost and watching the live stream this morning, God, that they'll realize they're a sinner, God. They'll realize you sent your son, Jesus, to die on a cross, and he died for us and for our sins. God an all atoning sacrifice he rose from the grave father and if we'll put our faith and trust in him God we can be saved and you said that all men can be saved dear Lord we thank you for that God we ask you Lord to help the folks at home God we ask you Lord to help us God we ask you Lord to touch the singing and touch the preaching Lord we love you God we praise you even in a time of trouble even in a time of depression even in a time of anxiety father we're coming to you this morning God oh God to give you praise Lord the thank Thank you, God, for who you are and what you do for us. Lord, and in the, in the wonderful, holy, powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray this morning. Lord, we love you. And in Jesus' name, amen, amen.
Amen. Aren't you thankful for that God this morning? Somebody say amen. <laughs> Aren't you thankful for that God? The God that's faithful. The God that's true. Yeah. The God that loves you more than anything in this world. I mean, he sent his only begotten son to die for you. There's a God in heaven that cares for you this morning. Here's the thing. We don't serve a dead God. We don't serve a God that cannot do what we need. I'm going to preach in a minute. I'm going to talk about his promises. I'm glad. She's going to sing about that in a minute, too. I'm glad we got a God that can do everything that he said he could do. See, a promise is only good as the person that makes it. But I'm glad that my God is the one that walked on water. You understand? Jesus yeah. Christ healed, went around everywhere he went healing people, walked on the water. Hey, listen, he can do anything you need him to do this morning. And I know we're in fear right now, but I'm telling you, if we'll look at the Christ, we'll understand that he can do anything. All right. We want to sing a song. Didn't he walk on the water? Searched until I 
over time, think about how good God really is, even in the worst of times. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Glory! Even in the worst of times, our God's good. You know, we all decide, church, we're just going to go ahead and give Him praise. We're going to go ahead and praise Him in the storm. Amen? That's, yeah. that's, that's what we ought to just decide this morning. You're right. You know what? It, it doesn't matter what's going on. I know it's bad. I know things are bad. But let's just give Him the praise and the glory that He is worthy of. Yeah. Hey, let me give you a secret. It's going to get worse than it is now. Different when this is all cleared up, something else is coming in the future. You're right. It's biblical. We'll preach on it in one second. But I want her to sing a song. Through it all, he's there. That's what we've been focused on this morning. Didn't I walk on the water the promise? But I'm going to tell you what, because he's there, because he's able, because the promises he's made, listen, through every single trial, every single problem, every single thing we ever face, we can praise him and thank him and walk with him. see what uh, the Lord does in our hearts this morning. Amen. Uh, I want to, if we could, Brother Preston, if you're looking at this, send out a message, if you can, to tell people that the live stream is on our personal page due to an error and not on the church page. I'm getting texts right now saying people don't see anything on live stream. Amen. So uh, please, if you can, press the text out and let people know uh, that we shared it on the church page. It should be on there. And, and that they can go to our personal page and see that. Amen. Please, if you're watching, like and share right now so that people can see it. It is time to preach the Word of God. And I want you to like and share, let people know what's going on. And, and, and listen, we want to try and help some folks today. I've got a special message planned. And I, I grab your Bibles and go to Psalm 77. We're going to preach out of Psalm 77 uh, for just 20 or 30 minutes this morning. Listen, I ain't preached. I, I have not preached for a month and a half. I had a surgery. And, and, and then this stuff hit, and so I've got all kinds of stuff backed up, amen. And, and I want to preach to you out of Psalm 77. And, and, and I'm going to show you some different things 
uh, about that. And I want to give you something this morning that hopefully will help you that you can take home with you. Uh, that's why we didn't meet here this morning because nobody wanted to get something to church and take it home with them. Amen. Uh, but I want to give you something from the Word of God that you can take home, uh, that you can tuck down uh, uh, and, and you can hold and you can know uh, and you can go through in a time of need that you can put into play right now. And, and listen, we need some things to help us and give us comfort and give us peace in this time of certain uncertainty in our lives. Uh, now look, everybody's got a different opinion on everything. I'm going to talk about the situation for two or three minutes. Then we're going to preach the word. Amen. Uh, everybody's got a different opinion on what is going on right now. Everybody's got a different opinion. Uh, then you've got uh, you've got personal opinions. Then you've got different industries that are involved in this thing. Uh, you've got small businesses that are suffering. Amen. You've got large corporations. Some of them suffering. Some of them making uh, big money off this thing. You've got the healthcare industry. Uh, you've got governmental and political and media things. And I know sometimes you can't tell if uh, somebody's just stoking panic to make money, or you can't tell if something's real. Amen. Uh, yeah. One pastor I looked at in the beginning of this and you your news about this virus from the CDC and, and different reliable sources like that and, and not from opinion shows, amen, because they're there to make money, they're there to make ratings. I'm not minimizing what's going on, I'm just trying to help you. Uh, but listen, uh, opinions are like armpits, I heard a preacher once say. Everybody's got one and some of them stink really bad, amen. Uh, so I'm not here to give you opinion this morning. And, and believe me, I've looked at both sides of it. I've looked at uh, the different things, amen, and, uh, but I truly understand that there are people suffering. There are people that are sick. There are people that are planning funerals today uh, because this virus hit their home. That means it's not something to play about. I, I don't want to put funny stuff on Facebook or anything like that because I understand that. There are people uh, at the funeral home right now setting things up. And, and, and listen, it, uh, we've got to be sensitive to that. And, and, and I, I just want to try and help you this morning. I'm not here to give you my opinion, but I want to give you the word. Yeah. And, and here's what I do know. Here's what I do know this morning. There are people living in fear. There are people that are anxious. There are people that are scared. And it's all because of the uncertain time that we're living in. It's right. because tomorrow you don't know if you're going to catch the coronavirus. It's because tomorrow you don't know if it's going to spread all throughout our community. It's because tomorrow you don't know what's going to happen. And people are fearful. And I start thinking about the different people. I think about the small business owner that left their business and closed the doors. And in two or three weeks they may go back. And they may not have the funds to buy their inventory or their overhead. And they may have to shut down. Or they may have to yeah. go find a business owner. Their whole life has changed. I think about my evangelist friends uh, that I just got off the phone with yesterday who's had uh, four weeks of meetings canceled. Uh, that, that is their sole income. That is how they live. That is how they support their family. That's how they feed their kids. And now they have no way to do that for at least a month. And, and, and God forbid if they get sick or, or, or God help them to not get sick because that will put them out for even longer. And, and, and listen, I, I, we are in uncertain times right now. I think about the church that may be operating from week to week, not on purpose, but by necessity on their finances that are going to come back in two or three weeks and, yeah. uh, uh, not without being able to receive the tithe and, and having a serious problem with their finances. I think of the elderly uh, that are in the so-called danger zone of the coronavirus uh, that are scared to death to leave their home, scared to death to do anything, scared to death. Listen, I think of the people with COPD and the different respiratory illnesses. Uh, these are uncertain times. Uh, but I hate to tell you this morning, if you can't grab your Bible, jump over to 24 real quick in the book of Matthew. I hate to tell you, uh, but there's a whole, all this stuff's lining up with the Bible. Uh, we'll preach another message on that later on. Uh, but in Matthew chapter 24, verse 6, it says, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of of wars. See that ye be not troubled. That's what Jesus said. Yeah. Be not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and diverse places. Now I understand how to divide the word of truth. Amen. But I want you to look at those things right there. I did a whole message on that not too long ago. Famines uh, in our little American bubble. We don't even see it, but honestly it's coming out and going to San Francisco uh, where they're defecating in the streets and different crazy things are happening. And this homelessness and poverty is an epidemic in our world. Right. Back in 2015, my stats are old this morning, there was a billion children worldwide living in poverty. UNICEF claims that 22,000 children die each day from poverty. Yep. 
Yeah. But you scoff, we scoff at the, the, the commercials of sending things to that, and I understand all that. But I'm telling you, there's epidemics going on. We're living in uncertain times. Earthquakes are happening on a larger scale than ever before. That verse said, uh, kingdom against kingdom, there shall famines, pestilence, earthquakes in divers places. Do you know that in 1930 to now, the number of earthquakes has, uh, has tripled? A tremendous spike of the six plus Richter scale in the last decade? That's what killed the 360,000 in Haiti in 2010. I know that was the very beginning of the decade. How about divers places? A 2.4 magnitude hit Bluefield, West Virginia in February 2015. A 2.6 in Cross Lanes, West Virginia in June of 2014. Who would have ever thought the ground would be shaking in West Virginia? Yeah. yeah. You can't ignore the signs of the times. You can't ignore the season that's coming. Pestilence was in those verses. Diseases and plagues is what that means. The World Health Organization said infectious diseases are spreading around the world faster than ever and new diseases are emerging at an unprecedented rate. In the last 30 years, we've been introduced to the Ebola. We've been introduced to SARS. We've been introduced to AIDS. We've been introduced now to uh, uh, the coronavirus. All this stuff in just so many years. The World Health Organization says 36.9 million people are living with HIV. Flus have mutated at an astounding rate and it's taken lives. CDC says, this is from 2015, probably way more now, 30,000 people dying by the flu a year. Mm -hmm. Seems like people are sick all the time. When I was a kid, we drank Diamond's Hat. I used to say, Mama, give me some more. That stuff tastes good. It's like grape juice. Now, you've got to get a flu shot that after the season, they may tell you it was only 10% effective. I don't, don't know if I get mad at me. That's just what I heard. Because things are mutating. Things are happening. They, they, it, it's uncertain times, all I'm trying to tell you this morning. But the beginning of that verse says, see that you be not troubled. You see, the major problem that I'm preaching on, I know I just depressed you, but what I'm trying to do is lift you up this morning. And, and here's the major problem. We got, we got the coronavirus, which is dangerous, which we need to do everything we can. We need to do the social distancing. We need to do all that different stuff. But, but, but one problem that is, that is multiplying that, that is feeding that, is the fear and, and, and the panic that has been stoked. And the fear and the panic that is invoked on people uh, right now. Listen, I'm not minimizing the seriousness of the situation. I'm following every precaution. I don't want what you got, amen? If you got something, I don't care if it's a flu, A, B, C, D, Z, Corona, whatever, Budweiser, I don't care what it is you got. I do not want it. Amen. And I'm going to do everything I can to keep from getting it. Common sense. But what I'm saying this morning is Bible and the fact that we, as God's people, should not live in fear and panic. That's right. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And I know it's hard not to be anxious and nervous. I understand that the disciples, which we look at as super Christians sometimes, struggle with it themselves. They said in John 20, 19, after Jesus had died and, and, and rose, they said, then the same day at the evening began the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. Mm -hmm. They were scared to death. But Jesus pops up, and Jesus stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. There's that word peace again. Yeah. Now listen, the coronavirus is bad enough. It's bad enough to, and then to add not have any bottled water is worse. It's bad enough, and then to not have any toilet paper to do your business is even worse. Amen. The corona is bad enough then to not have all the necessities of life, like cold medicine, like people want masks and gloves and sanitizer and soap, and all those different things, and all the, listen, all the ammunition's gone out of Cabela's. I'm kind of for that one right there. Stop cutting my friend's second amendment all day long. But, but uh, I'm telling you, it's all being hoarded up because of fear and because of panic. Uh, listen, for my graduation uh, at, at Marshall University for my finance degree, I did a capstone research paper, 50 pages long, on investor psychology and the, 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 the things that drive investor psychology and how that fear pay, played a major part in investor psychology. Your 401k is hitting rock bottom right now. Your portfolio, everything that's going on because of Trump economy, uh, the GDP growth, everything that's going on. Hey, hey listen, even a, even a Democrat can look, uh, or anybody can, sorry, even anybody can look at their portfolio and say, by golly, in five, four years, I've gone up 20%, but now it's dropping down, it's dropping down fast. Do you think it's because of coronavirus, or do you think it's because everybody's in fear and panic, and they're pulling things, they're doing things? That's what's causing many things in our lives right now, 
is fear, panic, and anxiety. You're right. And I want to help you with that this morning. Said all that to get to all this. I want to help you get through that. Because even without hand sanitizer, without ammunition, without toilet paper, you may not be able to imagine that, but we can still live in peace and not live in fear. We can still lay our head down on our pillow at night and go to sleep resting and knowing that our God is still in control. Our God is still on the throne. Our God is still all powerful. Hey, listen, the Christian does not have to live in fear and anxiety. Yeah. In the midst of uncertainty. Psalms 77. I ain't going to spend much time setting it up. You just want to trust me this morning. It's a Psalm of Asaph. Everybody agrees it was written after, uh, after the ten northern tribes had been destroyed and dispersed. And, and, and after the Assyrian army, the world power at the time, had come in. Uh, now they're, they're looking at either uh, the Babylonian armies getting ready to come destroy the children of God and the two southern tribes, Judah and Benjamin, and take Jerusalem. Uh, uh, or it's already happened, some, some folks say, but n- n- neither here nor there. No matter what, God's people are in about the worst time they'd ever been. God's people are suffering. God's people are struggling. If I read the prophecy right, if I read, read the, the prophet right, 33% of them died. Amen. And, and, and listen, I know the coronavirus says 5% of those infected. That means the Lord because many aren't going to be affected. Uh, but they lost 33% of their people. I have to say the psalmist uh, here today uh, would look at what we're going through. And I'm not minimizing anything. But he would say, my goodness, uh, we've lost our families. We've lost our homes. We've yeah. lost everything. Uh, but I can get through. I serve a God that will help me through. I've got a God that will answer prayers. I've got a God that made me yeah. promises. And I can't get through. You're right. I want to preach on this thought, how to cope with the corona pandemic. Victory in the virus. Let's look at the text. Verse 1 says, I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice, he gave ear unto me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My soul ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. But thou holdest my eyes waking. He could go to sleep. I'm troubled so that I cannot speak. He was speechless. I've considered the days of old, the years of ancient times, and I call to remembrance my song in the night. He said, I'm going to remember some stuff. I communed with my own heart and my spirit made diligent search. Will the Lord, here, here's some questions, maybe facetious. Uh, will the Lord cast off forever? Will he be favorable no more? In his mercy, is his mercy clean gone forever? Doth his promise fail forevermore? Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Hath he in anger shut up his tender mercies? And I said that this is my infirmity. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will. I like these I wills. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God is our God. Thou art the God that doest. Wonders. Lord, we love you. God, help us this morning. God, encourage us, Lord. We need your help. Holy Spirit, move in the homes right now. And God, encourage hearts. Lord, touch folks. God, I ask you, dear God, to help my people, dear Lord. Oh, God, and give them encouragement. Give them peace. Give them comfort, Father God. Help us, Lord, to do the things we need to do, God, to have that comfort. Yes, we'll praise Lord. you and thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Every single Christian can live in victory over the fear and anxiety in these uncertain times. Every Christian can. Yeah. And, and, and I want to show you three things to apply that are very simple. Three simple concepts you can apply in your life to help you get victory. Number one, you need to apply practical requirements for every moment. You need to take some practical things that you've learned in Sunday school, you've learned in church, you've learned to do your whole life, and you need to apply them for everything in your life, every moment. Everything that goes on. Look at verse number one. He said, I cried unto God with my voice. What's he doing there? He's praying. And notice he said, he gave ear unto me. God hears your prayers. He may not answer immediately. Uh, you may not think he's answered, but God hears your prayers. Then he said, and in the day of the trouble, I sought the Lord. He said, I sought the Lord. Then look at verse three. Uh, I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Then he said in verse four, thou holdest mine eyes waking I am so troubled I cannot speak. Yeah. That psalmist in the first four verses gives us a good, good, uh, applicable things that we can do. 
First thing he said was, take, uh, listen, we need to take our petitions to God. Whatever it is we need God to do. Uh, the psalmist said, I cried unto God with my voice. Now, I know a lot of people probably watching this morning that don't go to our church, uh, but I preach to my people uh, that I believe in praying passionately and I, be, I believe in praying verbally. I believe in praying to God. Amen. And I'm telling you, that don't seem like a meditation type prayer. That don't seem it's God's place, but that right there, when that psalmist needed the help of God, that does not seem like a man uh, just bowing his head in the Burger King and bear saying anything that sounds to me like a man uh, that needs God to move, right. need God to do something, and he's crying out to God with his voice. Hey, the yeah. Bible says he cried out to God with his voice. I wonder when the last time was that you truly cried out to God to do what you needed him to do That's this true. morning. Listen to me, church. And you got down and said, God, grab your family, grab your children, and get down and say, God, help us, dear God. Father God, put a hedge of protection yeah. about my children. Father God, protect my whole family. Father God, I ask you, God, put a hedge about us and do not let my family get that virus. Father God, don't let people die from that virus. That's right. yeah. Listen, I believe, I believe we're still a Christian nation. I believe we've got a large sense of Christians larger than any other country. And I believe if we all get down and pray with passion and power, I, I believe you can look at them stats and we wouldn't be nothing like Italy like they're saying we're going to be in 10 days. Hey, man, I believe in the power of prayer. I believe God can do it. Listen, I, I remember a time in my life I started 10 years ago started having all kind of physical problems, all kind of pains, all kind of joint pain and different things like that. They started testing me for all that uh, uh, autoimmune stuff. They tested me for lupus. They tested me for all these different things. And it came down this morning and said, we need to do an MRI to test you for MS. Multiple sclerosis. For some reason, that one scared me more than all the others. I got online, I started reading, I increased my knowledge. And remember, Proverbs said, uh, knowledge will turn you into a fool sometimes. I sat there and studied as much as I could about MS. I mean, I could have diagnosed somebody, amen. I could have... I could have told you what you had. I could have, and listen, I sat there and studied it and studied it and studied it. And I knew the symptoms. I knew the signs. I knew everything that it would do. I knew what it would cause in your life, all that different stuff. And I'm going to tell you, I've done convinced myself that I had it. I've done been laying. I, I guarantee you some of you have done read about this stuff so much that you feel like you got a dry cough. You feel like you got a uh, you got a headache, hey man. You feel like you run a fever and you ain't running one. And I ain't minimizing nothing. I'm just saying that's what knowledge can do. That's what uh, that's what stuff in our mind can do, hey amen, especially when You're it's right. negative. And I'm just telling you this morning uh, that, that, that I was scared to death. I ain't never had anxiety or panic attacks. Uh, but that night I was laying on the edge of a couch on Campbell Street West. Virginia, and I was scared out of my mind. I was staring at the floor not knowing what to do. I was tore up. Listen, I sat there and thought, oh God, every pain I'd feel, everything I'd feel in my body, I thought, oh God, my life's done. I'll be in a wheelchair in 10 years. It's all over. And I went and listen, I sat there, and God, the Holy Ghost smote my heart, and I began to pray, and, and yeah. as I prayed to God, I'm telling you, I wouldn't feel the pains, yeah. and I felt better, and I had comfort and I had a peace and then I'd stop praying and I'd lay there and I'd go right back. My mind would start working. I'd start thinking and thinking again. But then I'd start to pray and all of it go away and I'd have peace. I, I prayed all night long. Hallelujah. Went to the doctor the next day. They didn't find any whitening on my nerves in. They said, hey, you don't have MS. I said, glory to God. I yeah. worried for nothing. But I sure am glad I was able to go to the Father and That's I could good. pray and I could seek Him and I could find peace in Him yeah. in a time of need. Thank God for prayer. Next the psalmist says, he said, I sought the Lord. He said he sought the Lord. Y'all gonna hurt me this morning, amen. Is anybody saying amen out there? Amen. Hallelujah. Next he said, I sought the Lord. Now listen, praying is telling the Lord what you need. Seeking the Lord is figuring out what He needs and what He wants. How do we do that in our lives? How do we do that? We, 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 we study the Word of God. We look at the Word of God. Not yet, sister. When we look at the Word of God, listen, I'm telling you, some of us are panicked, some of us are scared to death. But I ask you this question. Have you read the Word of God since all this happened? That's good. 
Now let me ask you another question. Have you read as many verses as Facebook posts you've shared? Honestly. Yeah. Have you read as many verses of, uh, of, of reports you've read on Facebook? Have you ever studied a subject like peace in your Bible like you've studied this virus? Yeah. I ain't trying to be mean here, but I wonder. You could probably diagnose somebody walking down the street when you heard them cough and ask them a couple questions, but could you walk them down Roman road or would you be scared? That's good. Because what's in this Bible is a thousand times more important than what, what we're dealing with right now. You're right. Mm -hmm. there, there's a sickness, there's a virus called sin. Right. There's people on their way to hell. That's right. But listen, I, I'm trying to encourage you this morning. And getting in this Bible will encourage you more. Some of us, I know it's an old saying, some of us need to get our face off of Facebook, get our face in the book. That's how you're going to get encouraged. Prayer and getting in the Bible. And listen, I, I, lastly, he said, I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Thou holdest mine eyes open, I couldn't sleep, and, and troubled that I could not speak. He lost his speech. He was speechless. You know what happened? He was negative and he complained. And then because of that, after that, he couldn't sleep. Yeah. Would you agree with me that we're inundated with negative news right now? Mm -hmm. How many posts have you said, hey, this is happening, but, but this, and I know we, I got a lot of Christians on my Facebook, and I see a lot of positive stuff, but there's a whole lot of negativity out there. You know what Dr. Walter Cowley said? He said in a survey he did, 8% of things people worry about were legitimate matters of concern. That means 92% of the things we're worried about aren't even going to happen. Will right. you tell the devil to give you your mind back? Will you say, devil, get thee behind me. I want my mind back. I'm not going to be negative anymore. I'm going to think positive. I'm going to do what Paul said in Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. We've got to apply the practical things in our life right now if we want peace. You're Prayer, right. Bible reading, yeah. and, and, and biblical thinking, just because I don't like to say positive thought, amen? Uh, listen, uh, we've got to apply those things. Practical requirements for every moment. Secondly, we need to premeditatively remind yourself of your master. That means on purpose, premeditate to do it, and remind yourself of who your God is when times get bad. Here's what he said in verse 5. I've considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my soul and night. I commune with my own heart. And my spirit made diligent searches where I like this part right here. My Lord, uh, will, will the Lord cast off forever? Will he be favorable to no man? No more? He, is his mercy clean gone forever? Uh, doth his promises fail forevermore? Hath God forgotten to be gracious? So you need to always remember who your God is. Listen, he, he, that the psalmist said, have we lost his favor? I don't believe the church is ever going to lose God's favor. We may go through some things. Some things may happen. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, listen, uh, we, we cannot understand what God is doing. We cannot understand why the virus is here. Uh, but I may preach on this next week. Now listen to this. Listen to this closely. I heard another preacher talking similar to this. Could the coronavirus be the catalyst for the revival the church needs? That's good. Could it be that people will flood the church houses when we open them up, missing the fellowship they have, missing the preaching they have with a renewed spirit and desire to serve God? Uh, could it be that sinners will say, man, uh, life is not that easy? Could they say that I could be out of here? Any time, point in time. I've seen people die. I've seen things happen and run to the church house. But could the people you've been praying for for years say, you know what? It's time for me to come to the church house. And the corona could be the catalyst for the church to have revival. You're right. <laughs> the psalmist said, listen, the church ain't lost its faith. The psalmist says his mercy is his grace gone. Listen, not a nary one of us would be here this morning to listen if his grace and mercy was gone. Okay. You'd be dead. Listen, he'd never, if it wasn't for his grace and mercy, boy, we'd all be in hell with our back broke. Amen. If it wasn't for his grace and mercy, listen, we'd be off in a gutter somewhere, drunk and messed up even after we got saved. You understand me? God's grace is sufficient. God's grace. Said, hey, listen, I'm thankful for the grace of God this morning. I want, I want to jump on this one real quick. I said it a minute ago when we was uh, talking about, but I like that one. He said, "Is his promise is going to fail. A promise is no 
better than the person that made it. But here's the thing. If I make you a promise, I very well could mess that thing up. But we've got a God this morning that's never broken a promise to You're a right. single person. We've got a God this morning that has the ability to fulfill every promise that He's ever made. He has the ability to make any promise He wants to. And He can do anything He wants to. And listen, every time we doubt, every time we worry, every time we get scared, we need to think about the promises of God that He has put His Word in. If you don't yeah. do point one and study your Bible, you ain't going to know about them promises. This whole thing ties together, my friend. You've got to pray. You've got to study. Study your Bible. You've got to think biblically. And you've got to remember the promises of God. Amen. God promised salvation to all that believe in His Son. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Somebody turn and slap your countless neighbor and say, everyone. Yeah. My wife just slapped Rock in the mouth, but he ain't, he ain't countless. <laughs> Jesus promised eternal life to those who trust Him. Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give them, he shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in a well of water springing up to everlasting life. He promised to hold us securely forever. <laughs> and I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Those three things right there means we're safe and secure and on our way to heaven. Amen. You ain't going to threaten me with a promotion to heaven. You're right. I know ain't nobody want to die, but you ain't going to threaten me with a promotion to heaven. Yeah. But for today... If saving your soul eternally ain't enough, here's some more. He promises comfort in our trials. Amen. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. He promised us all things are going to work for good for His children. And we know that all things work together for good for them who love God, them who are called according to His purpose. He promised rest in this world when we're weary and tired. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Right. He promises peace that passes all understanding. You're right. Amen. He promises us peace this morning. He says in Philippians 4, 6, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God. Now notice he said, Be careful for nothing but pray. And he said, the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ. You want peace? What do we say in the first point? Pray. Yeah. There's a promise for every situation you're going to face. The problem is we are not putting our faith in the promises of God. We're not believing what he tells us. I need a little story. We're almost done. I got another point, but we're, done. we're almost done. There's a lady that's been coming to my church for some time now. She, as a teenager, the Holy Ghost of God convicted her in a church service. She called upon the Lord and she was saved. But then she married and life went on and she was pulled through, through connections and things into the Mormon church. Being a part of that church for 40 years. And, and let me just tell you, a lot of places that have changed the Bible and done different things about the Bible, they're not going to tell you when it's not. And I, I just don't think they're going to encourage you to study God's unadulterated, unchanged word when they've changed things. Now, I don't know nothing about that religious group, anything about that. But all I do know is this sweet dear lady had been told a promise that she was told was biblical, that if she left that church, if she left that group, that she would be damned to hell forever. Yeah. Man's promise. <laughs> So I grabbed. She, she couldn't have any peace. There was no peace in her life. Scared to death. Would come and worship and, and love it, but then walk out scared to death with no peace. Scared to death. And, and, and I wondered what was going on. We went to her, and it was that right there. Scared that if I, I, I left that group, left them, I'd be damned to hell forever. And, and, and then I, 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 uh, we began talking to her, and I took a friend of mine. Uh, that, that grew up Mormon for 20 years uh, and now as a Baptist preacher I took him over there because I knew he'd know what to say and we went and visited we sat down on the couch and with my mouth I said my words for an hour nothing, no peace, no help, nothing but then my friend, Brother Chris, grabs his Bible and flips it open. And he knew exactly where to go. He knew exactly what to talk about. And he went to Revelations chapter 22 and 18 and promising our word that, that may not apply to your salvation all that stuff. 
But it applied this way. Now listen, it said in Revelation 22 18, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. When we read that verse, I'm telling you, <laughs> the yeah. Holy Ghost of God showed up in that living room. Right. Tears began to stream down that face. Hey, glory, she said, read it again. Read it again. He said, for I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plague. Tears run down. She lifted her hands up and said, thank you, God. Thank Thank you, God. Thank you, God. She realized man's promise was nothing. That God's promise was something. Then we jumped over and read Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and the not of yourself. It is a gift of God. I'm here to tell you this morning. It is the promises of God that will give you peace. Right. Hey, don't you listen. Yeah. Don't you get scared because what somebody else says. But pick up your Bible and look at the promises of God. And it will get you through. What you need to get through. Yeah. You want peace this morning? You want peace this morning? Rely on them promises of God. We need to apply them practical requirements for every moment. We need to premeditatively remind ourselves of our master. And lastly, we need to purposefully recall his miracles. Look at verse 10. We can just jump through since I'm behind. Look at verse 11. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of all. <laughs> wonders. You jump down to verse 14. Thou art a God that doest wonders. You know what that is? That's miracles. We serve a God that can do anything you need Him to do this morning. Yeah. We serve a God. Hey, listen, I, Corona may be the last thing on some of y'all's minds. Somebody may be going through divorce this morning. Somebody may be going through cancer this morning. Somebody may be going through death and putting somebody in the grave this morning. I don't know what it is, but I'll tell you, we've got a God that specializes in miracles. We've got a God that specializes in peace. Yeah. I think all the miracles he did in my life. And I just think, how am I going to doubt it? Here's what Spurgeon said. We are prone to engrave our trials in marble and write our blessings in the sand. We forget the miracles that God does for us. I, I remember when I was lost and on my way to a devil's head. I was an alcoholic. I could not stop. I tried over and over and over. And I don't want to ever forget the fact that lost messed up everything. I mean, everything in my life was destroyed. I don't ever want to forget the fact that I walked into a church service and sat on that third pew on the right and God was able to perform the miracle in my life. He convicted my heart. I called on His name. He saved my soul. He took the alcohol away. He took the drugs away. He took the cursing away. He took all that away. And honestly, He fixed everything up in my life. Yeah. He's a God of miracles. Now, if we're going to doubt what He can do in our lives right now, after He's saved us, after He's changed us, listen, I know you've watched miracles before. At my own church, we watched a man, stage four cancer, throat cancer, in hospice. The men of the church went and prayed and called his prayer meeting around him. 100 pounds, six foot tall man, he's 100 pounds. They prayed, put their hands on him, and begged God to heal him. Through God's power, God healed that man. He's alive and well today. We serve a God that can get you through whatever it is you're struggling with. Whatever it is. And I want to ask you this. I just gave a little bit of my testimony. But I'm encouraging you this morning. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you have every reason to walk in fear and anxiety. I mean, if this thing, and you are one of the 5% that catch it and struggle bad, and then you are one of the lower percent that die, which is possible. If that were to happen to you, and you woke up in eternity tomorrow, you'd wake up in a devil's hell forever. And I'm begging you, if you're walking this morning, and the Holy Ghost of God is probing your heart right now, saying, I'm lost. 
You need to realize you're a sinner. You need to say, you need to turn your life to Christ. You need to give it all to Him. Call upon His name, the Bible says. Here's what the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 10 says, If thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's the gospel. Yeah. Believe that Jesus, God in the form of man, came, lived perfect, bore your sin, died on the cross, and rose from the grave three days later, proving he was God. Put your faith and trust in him. Call upon his name this morning. Simple prayer. Lord, I believe you. Lord, I'm a sinner. I believe Jesus died for me and rose from the grave. I'm putting all my faith and trust in him this morning to save me from my sin. If you'll do that right now, I believe the Lord will save you. If you do it and mean it and give him your heart, he'll save you. And if you do that, listen, I promise you, everything may not get perfect, but God, he'll, your life will change. Oh, God, it be so good. Listen, peace, joy. I didn't have any of it when I wasn't saved. Thank the Lord is saved. If you'll do that right now and call his name, he'll save you. Just a simple prayer. Lord, I love you. God, I'm turning my entire life to you. God, I'm giving it all to you. I believe Jesus died for me and paid the penalty of my sin. He rose from the grave and I'm putting all my faith and trust in him. Lord, I love you. Forgive me of my sin in Jesus' name. Amen. Something like that. If you truly called on the Lord this morning, I want you to call our church. It's 304-372-8440. If I don't answer, I'll be here all day. But if I don't answer, leave a message and let me get back a hold of you. We want to disciple you and help you. If you're my church folk or whoever's watching, I don't know. I don't know what else you may be struggling with this morning, but I know there's a lot of problems and stress and anxiety. And I say this morning, we just say, you know what, I'm going to pray. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to put the negativity behind. We've got a nurse friend who's working on one of the COVID floors. You can imagine how stressful it is. Seen on Facebook the other day, she said, I'm taking a hiatus. I'm off of Facebook. You can message me if you want. I'd say things in her life are so negative, so many bad things going on, she don't want to see no more of it. Now, I don't know how to talk to her, but that, that would be where I would be. Put the negativity away and pick up the positivity. Pick up the Bible. Do the practical things. Believe the promises of God. I'd say it'd be a good time right now to grab your family. And I want you to pray for a hedge of protection around your family. I want you to tell God that you believe Him, you believe His Word, you're going to study His Word, you're going to pray, and you believe His promises, you remember His miracles, and you're thankful for His mercy and His grace. Pray for edge of protection about your family. Pray for God to heal our country. Pray for God to use this thing to send real revival to our country. Would you? I'm going to pray. The Lord's going to sing a song. Then we're going to log off this morning. Lord, you be ready to sing when I'm done praying. I want you to take this time to pray with your family. Lord, we love you, Father. Father God, I'm begging you this morning, God, help our people, God. Not to waste this moment, not to waste this time, God, but to use it just as if they're sitting in the church house right now, Father. I'm begging yes. you, God, to put a hedge of protection about our church, yes. put a hedge of protection about our families, Father God. I beg you right now, God, that not a yes. single child in my church, not a single mom, not a single dad, nobody in my church, uh, God, catches that. I pray they don't get the flu A. God, I pray they don't get the flu B. God, I pray you put a hedge of protection of health about every single family, God. I pray, God, you touch our community. God. I pray, dear Lord, you'd heal this disease. I pray, God, you'd find the answer to solve it. But dear God, I pray the curve will flatten. Dear God, I pray people will follow recommended things. God, yes. just to help this whole thing to smooth over, dear God. But I'm going to trust in you, Father. I'm going to believe your promises. Yes. God, I'm going to thank you for your mercy. God, I'm going to thank, thank you for you, your God. grace, dear Father. Oh, God, forgive me for not reading my Bible as much as I should, Father. Forgive me, God, for not praying like I should, dear Father. And God, I ask you to help every one of the families in our church, God, uh, to be prayer warriors, dear Father, uh, to be Bible thumpers, dear God, that we pick up
up the word tonight with our children and read the word of God. Lord, that we get our families together. God, we pray for protection. That we pray for health, dear God. I pray, Lord, you use this thing to set the church on fire, dear God. Help us, Lord. Heal our land. Heal our communities, Lord. We'll thank you, God. But we're going to praise you in the storm, God. We're going to praise you this morning. We're going to thank you this morning, dear Father. You're good to us, God. And we thank you. And we praise you, Lord. Lord, can you do one more time?